So we're back here in our little town and we let's just quickly grab a drink. There we go. And we have the farming things that we need. So let's head up to our farming area. Which is at the top of this waterfall. Here we are, here is our first farm. And as you can see, we have some flax here that's ready to be harvested. So to harvest flax, you're going to need that uh, scythe that we bought. So let's head into our inventories, go to our tools, and equip our stone scythe. I'll put it at number six for now. We're also going to need our wooden hoe because we're going to be plowing. And we're going to need our simple bag for seeds and fertilizer. So equip all those things in preparation. Let's hit six on our keyboard, take out our scythe, and start getting some flax. There we go. Excellent. All harvested. Now let's take out our wooden hoe and oh no sorry our fertilizer bag right now we have onion seed um, equipped so we're gonna have to change that to fertilizer right click field go to fertilizer and then you're gonna fertilize this area just by left clicking That hasn't grown yet, so we're going to leave that alone. And we're going to put fertilizer in this area here because we have harvested these cabbages already. If you're not sure what to do with a plot, just hover your mouse over it and it'll say unfertilized, which is your hint to fertilize it. Then once it's fertilized, it'll say unplowed, which is your hint to plow. So the game is pretty helpful. It tells you what you need to do with these various plots in the farm. So let's plow. Excellent, we got a farming skill. Good job. Next we need to sow, unsown. So we need our bag of seeds and we have to put some seeds in the field. Now, it's summer right now, so we're not going to have that many options. You see, most things to plant are spring uh, items. There's some in autumn, but most are spring. However, uh, cabbage seed we can plant twice, once in, or three times in the spring, in the summer, and in the autumn. So let's plant some cabbage seeds right now. Select it, and then let's left click and you'll see all the seeds in your field. Excellent, cabbage is planted. Now the next requirement for our farm is to grub up a field and we can only do that with a new field. So basically let us build ourselves um, a new field since eventually we're going to need more than one anyway. Remember that you need to pay taxes on everything that you build so don't make your fields too large at the beginning stages of the game. Keep them fairly modest. Go to buildings, go to farm, and then go to field. 
And then when your little indicator thingy turns green, that means you can build from that location and just drag. Don't click complete yet, just drag until it's the size that you want. And then once it's the size that you are comfortable with, then you can click and it will complete the field. If there's something in the way, like a tree, you could just cut it down and you can um, dig up the stump and then you'll be able to build your field there. All right, let's take out our hole. And let's grub up. And once we've grubbed up one tile, we will have finished the chapter five of farm uh, requirement. And then we have gained 250 dynasty reputation points, which is great. Let's finish grubbing up the rest of them. Excellent. And we can also put some fertilizer that we have left. Um, in our field and plant the last of our cabbage. There's no point in having seeds in our inventory. They don't do anything. So let's just get rid of as many seeds as we can, grow as much as we can. All right, let's get our hoe out. thing we should plant those cabbage seeds however many we have left we have seven oops wasn't close enough it can be a little bit finicky uh, sometimes you uh, like definitely feel like you're on a square but the game's like nope you're not on the square you're not close enough so just get a little bit closer and you should be able to hoe and sow fertilize and all that stuff. There we go. All of our cabbage seeds have now been planted and they'll grow once the season switches to autumn. And we'll be able to sell them or use them in recipes, whichever we prefer. Excellent. So we're doing well. We have just recently finished chapter five, so we got 200 and some odd um, points our dynasty points, so let's check how we're doing with that. Look at that! We have now 20 buildings available to us. That is wonderful. So I will finish up a couple of things with you uh, during the summer months and then this video will be complete and you'll be on your own with a couple of recommendations at the end of this video. All right, let's head down. I'm gonna get some sleep so it doesn't get too dark for the tutorial, um, but feel free to run around and collect things throughout the night now that you have your senses available. Then you can go sell a bunch of stone knives be rich 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 <laughs> able to buy whatever you like it's always good to have a bunch of money in the bank um, I'm not sure if I spoke a little bit about berries in the previous game I think I did but I don't remember how much in detail um, berries are useful for basically collecting and then leaving to rot in your inventory because with rot you can make fertilizer. So making fertilizer at the beginning stages of the game is difficult because you don't have manure, you don't have any animals, and, and then you end up having to buy it from Gustovia, from the, the merchants there, and it's quite expensive. 
So as an alternative to that, you can collect a bunch of berries or even unriped berries, leave them to rot, which they will slowly do over time, and then you can change all that rot to fertilizer, which is the cheapest way. Um, that's the main thing that berries are good for. You can collect them and eat them. They do give you a tiny amount of hunger, satiation, and a tiny amount of thirst. So let's take a look at the berries. So just keep an eye here with 32.4 and 58.6. And if I eat a berry, I go up to 32.9 and 59.6. So, I mean, if you eat a lot of berries, eventually, you know, you can up your stats, but it's really not worth using them as food. The main thing you want to use them for is, as I said, fertilizer. And later on in the game, you can use them for um, making wine, which, you know, you can sell. So they're handy for that but it's almost better to just let your uh, your villagers collect all that for you because you you know you have better things to do than going around to berry bushes like this and collecting everything by hand it's a bit of a pain in the butt so yeah that's my advice again berries are gonna need to be in the food storage you can't put them in resource storage but you can store them in your chest in your house or in a chest in another person's in other villagers house or in um, a chest in the village so let's put these away if we can okay our chest is full so we can't store much else in here let's take out the firewood um, let's take out the oat roll I guess that's good Let's see if we can put more berries in now. Yep, get rid of most of them. Um, oh, this is stolen firewood, right? I don't know if your villagers are going to use stolen firewood. Let's see. Let's try. They may, they may not. I've actually never really stolen that many things. I never stole anything in my first game, and I'm only stealing now because I'm teaching you how to steal. <laughs> So I'm not sure exactly whether your villagers will voluntarily use stolen goods. But if that icon at the upper left goes away, <gasps> it does! So it doesn't matter if it's stolen firewood, your villagers will still use it. <laughs> Which is good. Alright, let's eat something while we're here. Um, on oat roll will give you 55 food which will fill us up pretty well so let's eat that and we're up to 100 so we're good all right i'm gonna sleep and remember you can sleep in any house you don't have to sleep in your house you can sleep in a villager's house if you want to excellent the last thing that i am going to do with you is I am going to build one more house and then uh, we're gonna recruit some villagers and assign them to some jobs and that's gonna be the last little bit of our tutorial for beginners so to build a house we're gonna need to cut down some trees for logs be careful with the tree. Um, here's a hint, the trees will fall away from you. So while you're cutting, the trees will fall almost always away from the direction that you are cutting in, which is nice. However, for example, if you have a tree that's near a house like this, you don't want to cut towards the house, for example, if you cut the tree like this, it will fall away from you onto the building, which can be damaged. So you definitely want the tree to fall away from you. Sometimes 
if you can make a tree fall onto another tree, sometimes the other tree will fall without you having to cut it. But that seems to be kind of rare. I don't know, I haven't gotten the hang of it, I guess. It's only ever happened to me coincidentally. Usually the tree just ends up propped up against the other tree, so maybe it needs enough momentum? I'm not sure. I did hear in a, you know, a couple of threads or a Reddit community or Discord, I'm not sure, but I did hear that wind might affect the direction that the tree is falling in. Um, I haven't really noticed that personally, but just keep that in mind. Again, always be careful when cutting down trees. It's the one way you can die instantly. I mean, also falling off really high areas, but one of the few things that will commonly kill you instantaneously is by getting a tree <laughs> falling on your head. And it's glitchy, so you just have to be careful. All right, let's build a house. It doesn't really matter where you build a house, but I like to build on stone, not on stilts. This is a stilt, and this is stone foundation. It's really up to you, um, but visually I find the stone foundations to be more aesthetically pleasing. So I try to have my houses on stone, but I don't fuss too much. Let's build a house together since it doesn't take that long to do. You're definitely going to have to stop for some more logs, but it's fine. We have some trees nearby. If you don't like the doors, um, you know, located where it is, you can always change any wall to a door. Um, just by hitting edit and then choosing walls with doors. That way, you know, your door can face this direction or behind. It's entirely up to you. However, there can only be one door per house. Just a reminder. You can upgrade um, to various things, like you can upgrade your roofs. We've discussed this already in a different video. And we also discussed the advantages and disadvantages to upgrading uh, to different wall types and everything in a previous video, so check that out if you're curious. But generally speaking, at the beginning stages of the game, sticking to waddle is just faster. Okay, we're out of logs, but let's just fill in the sticks. It empties our inventory and allows us to carry more. So it's always a good idea to just build everything you can to cut down on the items that are in your inventory and then go back and just put the logs in after. Let's get our logs. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven-ish logs that we need. Let's get eight just to be on the safe side. Two maple trees should do it. Each maple tree gives four logs.
One, two, three. Where'd you go? There you are. Four. You'll notice I stay well away from the tree as it's falling, and that's not what I normally do. It's because I don't want to take the chance of suddenly dying in this tutorial, so I'm patient. Alright, let's just whack the last logs in here. Hopefully we have enough. <gasps> No, we don't. I miscounted. One more tree. All right, where's our last log? The other thing that this alt is good for is it will show you where your log is. See? Log. It will also show you where arrows and weapons that you've um, that you've lost, like if you shoot an arrow. Well, let's do it right now. Just to show. You shoot an arrow and you miss your little boar. And then you want to maybe collect it again. Hold down the Alt key and it will show you where your arrow is as long as you're within range. And then you can just go and grab it. Sometimes your arrow will be destroyed and that's unfortunate. It just happens that it just breaks. Alright, let's get those last logs in here. Hopefully I have enough now. And let's go inside and finish up the attic. Excellent, so we're good. So we have a house for some new villagers. Um, eventually you can decorate it by hitting the E key, but that'll be for later for you guys. Intermediate, I'll let you explore that by yourselves since it's not a fundamental game mechanic to decorate your home. Now um, we need a bit more firewood apparently so let's do that before we head out so our villagers aren't too unhappy yes we definitely will need a woodcutter because doing all this ourselves is time consuming a woodcutter will definitely be helpful all right let's get some logs and one more tree just to give us some time don't want them whining about their firewood immediately here we go all right let's make these logs into firewood by going to our woodshed them in our resource storage building. Remember anything that isn't um, food and, and drink can go in here. Now before we leave the other thing that we should probably put in here to make sure uh, is some uh, stone knives. Uh, we need a few more, so we're gonna craft a few more and some axes as well. Let me explain why So as you can see for the hunting lodge The tool that they need to do their job is a knife and So if they don't have a knife they can't hunt and then they won't produce anything for you and also 
um, for the woodshed, the thing that they need for their job is axes. Now, we don't have a worker there at the current time, but we're going to go recruit somebody right now. Uh, so in preparation, let's put a couple of axes for them to use. So once we've recruited them, they can start working right away. The other thing is the well. Um, we need some buckets for them to be able to take water out of the well. And for that, we're going to need some planks. So we have a few things to prepare before we get some workers in those rolls. We're going to need to cut down another tree for planks, for making a bucket or two. As you can see, logs are so useful. Uh, here's another maple. Let's cut this one down. I mean, we probably have enough to make two buckets anyways, but since I'm here, let's just grab, there we go, a bunch of logs. Okay, let's go to our woodshed and craft some planks. I'm going to need four, so we're going to need two logs to be crafted into planks. Remember, one log gives you two planks, so two logs will give us four planks. There we go, four planks. Let's head over here and let's craft two buckets with our planks. All right, and let's put those buckets in this barrel here. This is the well storage. You can also put the buckets in the resource storage building and the worker will come and collect it. However, because we don't have food storage, the water that they collect will be stored in this barrel until we get a food storage building built. All right, we're almost at the end. So we're just gonna need some knives. We can fast craft that. Um, there was one, so let's make four. That way there's five. I like to keep at the beginning stages of the game five. I have every tool and later stages of the game ten or even twenty depending on how many workers I have. We just unlock the smithy which is handy. And the next thing we're gonna craft is our axes for our woodcutter. Let's make five of those. go and let's put those knives and those axes in our storage so our uh, workers have access to them and let's store the flax here I'm just emptying our inventory because always make sure you don't have too much weight and the other thing that we might want to consider is if our dude has enough food. Alright, there's five dried meat in here. I think... Um, The water should be okay for now. I'm going to take a bucket for the other people. The food, I'm going to give 10. And then uh, I'm going to prepare for our new arrival. Uh, actually, let's go to the, did I take the 10 or the 3? I can't remember. 
I took the 10. Okay, let's go to the new arrival. And put the water and the food. in there so they have everything ready to go so they got firewood they got a house they've got water and they've got food so as soon as we recruit them and place them in the house their mood will start to increase immediately so we've all prepared everything they need and that's great we're gonna get a drink of water And now we're going to go hunting for our next two villagers. We just used up a bunch of stone to make those knives and axes, so I'm just going to collect it as I go. Since there's a bunch here. Alright, I've been to Gustovia. I don't think there's anybody else left in Gustovia to recruit. There might be one person left, actually, now that I think about it. So let's go and see um, in Gustovia that last person and whether they're worth recruiting. Stones and sticks, always useful for making things to sell. Okay, so I mean, if it, there is a person in Gustovia, there's only going to be one person in Gustovia. So I think I'll head to, is it Baranica? Branica? The one that's right here. Ah, uh, Barowo. Barowo. Another hard village to say. Do you guys have any trouble with Tukki and Barowo? <laughs> or is it just me? It's just me, right? Yeah, it's just me. All right, let's head to Barrowo and see how the uh, recruitable villagers are and if they have the skills that we want. Sometimes when you're interacting with people, it's good to not be dirty. Just be aware of that. So I'm going to pop in the water here to clean myself off. As you can see at the bottom left, um, I have a dirt filth meter and now I'm all clean. I don't think it matters for recruitable villagers, but I'm not sure and better safe than sorry, right? No one likes to talk to stinky people anyway. Getting some sticks, and here's the village coming up on my right. Alright, and here are the recruitable people. There's three of them. And let's take a look at their stats. Walk up and hold down Alt. He's not anyone we currently want. How about you? Mm, not bad, but also not perfect. And you? Mm, also not the best. So what we're looking for is somebody who's good at extraction, who can be our woodcutter, but no one has stats higher than two. So you have two options. You can run to Branica, Branica or some of the other villages looking for somebody who has the stats that you want. Or you can just recruit um, a lower stat villager and, you know, just accept that they're not going to be perfect. Uh, eventually their stats will increase. I think out of the two guys, I don't know which is better. This guy at least has a three that I can eventually move him into farming. But in the meanwhile, he's kind of useless to me since I don't have any place to put him. Whereas you don't have any threes, but at least I can do a variety of things with you. All right, let's talk to Vormir. How are you? He's 19 years old. 
Okay, if I recruit Nidamira, she is 25. So they're not as close in age either. Hmm. Let's try the last person in Gostovia and maybe we'll get lucky. So we'll send her first. And before we leave, let us put her in a house so this poor lady isn't suffering in the rain the whole day. Alright, and for her we're going to assign her to be our woodshed person. Get her started on all that choppy chop. Alright, so here she is assigned. And don't forget, remember the previous video, you must open details and you must assign tasks, these assignments to her, okay? If you forget to do that, she will do nothing the whole day except stand around. So let's, I want lots of logs. I'm going to bump that up to like 50 at least. And then sticks, I can mostly do myself, so I'm going to stick that at 10%. Firewood's important, so I'm going to pop that up to 30%. That way I don't have to do it myself or worry too much. And planks, well, later on they're very important, but beginning stages of the game, 10% is fine. Alright, so we have 100% work intensity, and she will start collecting logs, firewood mainly, and then sticks and planks for us, so that's great. We got a nice worker going. There's something about one of our buildings that has an issue. I think that might be the workshop or the well. Hard to say. So we're going to head to Gustovia in the hopes that the one person I didn't recruit there is better than the two guys. They were sort of uninspiring. <laughs> the burrow guys. I'm looking for someone who has at least one three. I know that guy had a three in farming, but you don't need a farmer quite yet. I want them to have a three in something that we currently can have that villager working in. So maybe we'll get lucky. We'll see. Alright, um, where are you? There you are. You are our recruitable Mironieg. And let's hold down Alt to see his stats. Ah, much better. Ooh, he's got a three in hunting, so we'll put him in the hunting lodge and then swap someone out of that. And are you close to 25 years old? Nice, you're 24. So this guy's perfect. He is closer in age to the lady that I just recruited, and he also has a uh, three in a job that I want him to do immediately. So that's excellent. We're going to recruit him. We're going to uh, put him in a house, the house with the lady that we just recruited there. And then we're going to give him a job. But first... Let's check who's working in the hunting lodge and who we want to take out. So let's open details. Alright, so we have Kunigunda and we have Ansgar both working there. Uh, oops, wrong button. My apologies. Okay, Kunigunda and Ansgar. So these two are working in our hunting lodge currently. And... I want somebody to work the well, which is the last job we have, and the well is extraction, so it's going to have to be Kunigunda. I'm going to have to take her out of the hunting lodge, and go to her job workplace, hit remove, and then send her to the well. And then now she is currently a water carrier, and that's her new job. And don't forget, we have to give her tasks. Here's her assignments. We want her making nothing but buckets of water. 
Um, if you like water skins, you're welcome. Water skins are something you carry with you. But I find there's plenty of water around. I don't really care about water skins personally. I just ignore them. If it's really important to me to have water, I'll craft one. But generally speaking, I'm pretty fine without it. Great, so we have her working. She's got a bucket. She can do her job. And let's get some skills going here. Um, let's give a hunting knowledge. And farming knowledge. And yeah. Uh, diplomacy knowledge or Romeo. Romeo is also good. I'm going to put it in... Hmm... Which one? Let's go for Romeo. There we go. We're doing so well. Now we have four villagers. And they're going to be collecting things for us. Uh, have we gotten any logs yet? Has she collected a log for us yet? Let's check. <gasps> she has. You see? So already we have a log, we have firewood that they're collecting. So very handy to have these uh, villagers working. All right. So I think I'm going to spend the last little bit of the video simply discussing the next steps with you. Um, basically, looking at the upper right, just follow along with the chapters and also, if you want, the main story, you can follow along with as well. Um, you can also do villager side quests. They do give you things that you need, so definitely do those. But as I mentioned previously, just watch out for the ones about killing wolves because you're pretty weak at these beginning stages of the games. Uh, so I would recommend you... Um, avoid that one until you have slightly better ammo, uh, copper or tin um, or iron, but probably copper is going to be the next step. The other thing you should construct now is a barn and food storage. You're also going to need um, a shed, farming shed. So that's three more buildings and those are the next ones that you're going to want to build. After that a smithy would be good and a kitchen and all those, but take your time. Uh, smithy will allow you access to better quality arrows once you have uh, the ore. Next step also you're gonna want mine. Uh, discovering where the mines are located is one of the fun parts of the game so I'm not gonna tell you where all of them are but I'll tell you where one of them is uh, because it's pretty visible on the map. It's right here. So when you go to mine, you just need a pickaxe and you can run in and you can mine certain ore with stone pickaxes and you need higher level pickaxes to mine other ore. Um, and for iron, it's like you have to upgrade your mine to be able to get access to that. So that's later stages of the game and this is your mine. Do be careful because there's usually a bear on the outside of almost every mine. I was told that there wasn't a bear outside of one of the mines that's above Branica and Baranica. However, there was a bear in my playthrough, so <laughs> um, yeah, there are, there's generally a bear outside of every mine. Just be careful with that because bears are very dangerous, so they will hurt you. So here's a mine for you. and. Uh, you can get your ore there. It's not too far from where your village is located. So that's the, another point that you're going to want to do eventually. Explore all the way down here and avoid the bear as much as possible by sneaking or just running into the mine. The bear won't enter the mine itself, so as long as you can get in there quickly, you'll be safe. Again, for technology, you're going to want to build food storage, barn, and a farm shed. So these three buildings are the next things you're going to want to build in a row. Uh, again, in the previous video, we discussed how farmers are one of the 
few if own or maybe even only jobs where you need ideally their houses to be close to their occupation so for most it doesn't matter where they live and their job they start working as soon as they leave their house but farmers actually have to physically be at the field to be able to sow uh, seeds hoe the field etc so build your barn build your farm shed and build houses near the farm area for your farmers okay so make sure you keep that in mind so those three buildings are going to be your next step and then once you're done those you can go and build your smithy in your kitchen and by that point you should have a bunch of um, technology points opening up and then you can start building other things as you like I'm going to quickly tell you a little bit about how to get a wife because that's something that you should do at the beginning stages of the game. Now to get a wife, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to build a house. Not your house, it has to be a separate house. And in that house you're going to want to put a female. Um, it's up to you which one you prefer. Simply walk up to a female, have some small talk with them and you'll learn a little bit about their personality. Now once you have their personality down, um, then you can try flirting with them. So let's see if I can find a female to show you. Yeah, so here we are. You can talk to them, small talk, um, what's on your mind, it tells you that she's a hard worker, hard work keeps me going, blah blah blah. And then some of them will have different statements that they like uh, they like gifts or they like certain food or they like other things and then you can kind of choose your wife's personality a uh, hard worker is always handy um, but somebody who likes fancy things well they'll appreciate the gifts you give them more than somebody who's not into gifts and then you can romance this only works with certain individuals most women in villages will have partners already. So let's try her. Sorry, but I'm married. As you can see, almost everyone in the village is married. I've never come across a villager who wasn't married. So the only people that you can romance that I know of, um, with some few exceptions, are the recruitable villagers. So once you get a recruitable female villager that you like and whose personality works for you, you go to romance and you can flirt with her and you can also get her gifts. And once you do those things, her affection for you will increase. Now, once you have her affection for you up to 100%, um, you know, which you can find by you know, clicking on her stats and it'll say like affection and then it'll tell you how much affection she has for you. Um, once you have that up to 100%, then you will have a dialogue option to have a child with her, or get married and have a child. And then once you get married and have a child with her, she will move into um, your house. From the house that you placed her in, she will move into your house. Now, two things to keep in mind that's important. One, do not put a male villager in the same house as her while you are courting her until you marry her because she will likely marry him before you get her affection up to 100%. So she should be placed in a house alone, your potential wife, the woman you're interested in. Just leave her in that house alone until you get her affection up to 100% through flirting and gifts and then... Um, once you move her out of that house into a house with you, it's pretty safe. Uh, you're married. And then she'll have your heir, and your heir needs to grow up to be 18 years old. And at that point, uh, you've kind of won the game in a sense. Like The game will continue on endlessly, but this is called Medieval Dynasty, uh, because you need to have a dynasty. So if you die before your heir is 18, you will lose the game. So, so to speak. I mean, you can reload, but, uh, you know, that's less than ideal. So basically, you want to have a child um, 
early on in the game, don't let yourself get too old before you have a child because your child needs to grow to at least 18 years of age before you die. And you have a higher percentage chance of dying uh, once you reach 65 years of age and older. Um, so yeah, definitely just get a wife and get a child as soon as possible. It doesn't hurt anything to have a woman in a house by herself working. So just get that done quickly and uh, get our affection up. And as for gifts, um, basically gifts you can get from merchants. So just go to um, different villages. Like I know Hornica definitely has a jewel merchant. Um, you can buy gifts from them. They're quite pricey. So you're going to have to save up a fair amount of money for that. Um, you can also find gifts in uh, overturned carts or in little chests, uh, little treasure chests, um, uh, empty camps, or bandit camps, stuff like that around the map. So as you're exploring, you're probably going to come up across some gifts that you can give to your wife. You can only give her a gift once per season. So for example, it we're summer, so you can only give her one gift in summer and then you have to wait till autumn to be able to give her another gift. I believe it's either once per season or once per year, but I think it's once per season, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm mistaken, I do apologize, but I'm pretty sure it's once per season. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna say to you before I leave you, is to pay attention on the season once it comes to autumn you're going to want to start worrying about clothing and keeping warm now you can get too cold in the winter if you don't have the right clothing and um let's see inventory here we go clothing clothes so if you click on different items of clothing you'll notice below it tells you how much heat and cold protection you have now heat protection is not that big of a deal um but cold protection is and right now you see that my temperature tolerance is right here if it gets too hot it's not good if it gets too cold it's not good your health meter will start to decrease and eventually you'll die so just be aware of that once it gets to be winter you're going to have to either um, have a sewing hut unlocked and built and craft your own clothing or you can purchase it from merchants uh, in various villages a sewing a seamstress in various villages I know Danica has one for example and I'm pretty sure Hornica also has one so just head to a seamstress and buy some clothes. Or again, as you explore the map and you find treasure and you find abandoned camps and stuff like that, and these abandoned camps, treasure chests, etc., you'll find articles of clothing. Um, also bandits, you can find um, usually something there as well. And you can sell them and buy warmer clothes if you find summer clothes and so on and so forth. So definitely in the winter time, pay attention to your clothing. Uh, however, there's a little bit of a trick for that. Um, if you don't want to bother with clothing, what you can do is simply run around always with a torch on and equipped. And you'll stay warm enough to never freeze as long as you have a torch. So just make a bunch of torches and then run around with a torch uh, equipped and you'll be all right. However, it is impractical. Some things require two hands, uh, like a hoe. You can't hoe with a torch because you need two hands to do that. So, you know, certain things you can't do with a torch. So it is somewhat inconvenient to use that uh, technique. But, you know, in the case of an emergency, if you get too cold, simply whip out your torch and you will stay warm enough to be able to uh, last the winter without freezing so it's a handy uh, sort of not a cheat but like a little trick to know and be aware of um, I'm a dupe intend to make uh, little videos that um, 
will explain some other small things in detail. Uh, so for example, I do plan to probably get uh, or to make a video about dealing with bandits at lower levels, how to fight them uh, successfully. Uh, but I do need to come across a bandit for that video, which is somewhat random. Uh, so I haven't seen any bandits yet in this game, so I haven't been able to make a tutorial for that. But um, yeah, bandits is one of the ones that I'm going to make for sure. Uh, if there's any other little tutorials you'd like, some like short 10 minutes or 15 minute videos where I can show you the mechanics of certain things, or if you just like to see a bit about decorating your village, um, I'm more than happy to cre create, um, you know, a little brief video for whatever you guys are interested in learning about. So just put something in the comments and let me know what you need and I will definitely help you out with that. So I hope you enjoyed this play along with me series. I hope I've given you the steps you need to continue on in a more intermediate phase in your um, gaming journey. I think you have almost everything you need to know. The game gives you a lot of tutorials and help if you're ever stuck. So just read them. And uh, that, that will be in your um, in your menu here in knowledge. So if there's anything that you're kind of unsure of, feel free to check all of that. And again, just put a comment down below if you are um, unsure of anything. Um, yeah. So I think that's everything that I have listed to tell you guys. A lot of the things to tell you are in previous videos. So, oh, we didn't assign him. Let's just do that quickly. We're going to put him in the hunting lodge. Great. So, uh, yeah, I think that's everything um, to tell you guys for the next steps for your journey. And I hope you enjoyed the play along with me tutorial. And I'll catch you in the short videos that I'm going to be making subsequently. Have fun!